more recent material. Um, this question has an A, B, C, D, and an E. So we're gonna be spending today going over all of it. Uh, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time for A and B. Uh, before we do that, let's just read it together to see what we're talking about. So this problem has a bunch of stuff. First thing I see before even reading the paragraph, I see the graph of F, F regular. I see some piecewise function H. And then down here, this should look familiar now, we've worked with these. I see G is equal to integral F. So there's three different working pieces. I have a graph of F. I have a function for H, and you can see which piece goes to where. And I have this thing G equals integral F. So we're just gonna keep those three things in mind and probably not pay too much attention to this paragraph yet. They're just recapping what they, what we just said. The graph of F is given from negative one to 11. Yup. The area is bounded by the graph of F on da, 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 or four, three, and two respectively. They've put those areas in for you. So if we, if we need an area at some point, which obviously you're going to, they're written into this problem, four, three, and two. And since this one's underground, we're gonna know that that one's negative three. All right. And then it says G of X is given by this. All right, so in about 60 seconds, you're able to look at this and say, I've got a graph of F. I have three areas if necessary. This one's gonna be negative. I have a piecewise H. I have a thing G equals integral F. I've got my head wrapped around what's going on. We're gonna go on to part A and B. So for part A, it says show that H of X is continuous. Now that goes all the way back to the beginning of the year. Talk to me about, not necessarily this problem, but if something's continuous, remember I told you there were three rules of continuity? And I told you, hang on to them because they're going to come back eventually. Here they are. So let's go back to, I forget about this problem for a second, back to like September, back to pre-calculus even if you had me, when I taught you about limits and continuity, what are the three rules for continuity? So if you're going to have a graph, we know what continuous means, but if it's going to be continuous from A to B, what are the three rules that I need to know? Continuity has three rules. What were they? Um, I can't remember what it was two or three, but it's if the limit approaches X, it has to equal F of X. Okay. The limit as X approaches C for F of X is equal to F of C. You were giving me rule number three. So if we're going to make this thing continuous, that's the first thing we need. That's one of the three we need. Remember, one of them was like silly. It was real easy. What was the other one? Um, that f of x from, or f of, the limit of c from the left is the same as it from the right. All right. Limit as x approaches c from the left is equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right. And the first one is, yeah, basically good. f of x is defined. So if you have lost track of these rules, or if it's been too long since we've talked about it, now would be a good time to recap these in your notebook. If something's continuous, first things first, f of x is defined. Okay. That just means, yep, we're good. We have a graph. There's no gaps, no holes, no nothing. Um, the limit as we go from the left is equal to the limit from the right. Now that's like at C. So when we're saying something's continuous, we're saying it's continuous at a spot, right? And then the limit as X approaches C, that limit is the same thing as F of C. Okay. So I will be quiet for 30 seconds. If you need to write that down, go ahead and do it. But these are the three rules that we need to apply to the problem we're about to look at. All right, so back to our problem. Okay, we're going to show that H of X is not only continuous, but we're interested in it being continuous at negative one. 
So let's remember that at negative one. Okay. We'll come back to this. I'm going to let you guys try these. Okay. Next, order the values of all of these are H double prime. Order the values of H double prime of negative two, two, and 10. All right. Now, what do we have? We have H of X. We're being asked about H double prime. So now when it comes to taking the derivative of a piecewise function, it's no different than anything else you already know. You just derive both parts. So for example, H prime of X, H prime of X would be equal to, we'd make our bracket. It's just going to be equal to 2X plus three. The other one's going to be G prime of X. Okay. The bounds aren't going to, nothing's changing. So that's X is less than negative one. X is what they wrote there. That one is from what? Negative one to 11. Okay. So that's how you would find H prime. I will let you think through H double prime and then see what that means in terms of plugging those values in. Okay. So for A and B, A, you're trying to show all of this. And B, I think you should have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So it is 342 at 350, we will talk. Ready, go.
Okay, let's see what we came up with. So you're literally going to try to just list this out, right? So for part A, show that h of x is continuous. When they say show, they're telling you it is. So we're going to say for part A, h of x is continuous at x equals negative 1 because all right we want three things we're going to show that it's defined so just plug it in h of negative one is equal to and plug it in which one do i plug into for equal to negative one the top function or the bottom function the bottom all right so that's going to be equal to g of negative one, which is going to be equal to, we got to hop down to G now to figure this out. G of negative one, what would that be equal to? That would be the integral. So you're going to see these start to increase a little bit in complexity. That would be the integral from two to negative one. But are those bounds in a good order? No, so I'm going to switch to bounds and put a negative sign out front. So we're going to switch that. And then that's going to be for F of T DT. So now what is the area of F from negative one to two, negative one to two, it's four, but we got this negative sign in front of it. So it's negative four. Does anybody have any questions on part A, the first rule? All right, next, the limit as h approaches, or I'm sorry, x, excuse me, as x approaches negative one from the left, for which graph are we talking about? This is for h, right? Of h of x is equal to the limit as x approaches negative one from the right, and we better say what that is so we can look like we know what we're talking about. So what is that limit? It has to be graphed. Does it? We have a function for it. Think about this as a problem. Just plug in your limit values. So I'm, here's the graph for H. If we already did the negative one from the left or the right, which one did we already do? If you think about this graph from negative one to 11, four, negative, four. negative one to 11, wouldn't that be from the right? And then this one up here would be negative one from the left. Think about where you're coming from on a graph. If you are going from negative one to 11 versus everything less than negative one, the one on the bottom is from the right, the one on the other, the top is from the left. We already did the bottom, it gave you negative four. What happens if I plug negative one into the top? We get negative four as well. You get negative four, right? They match up, that's a good thing. That in your mind should be checking out going, okay, cool, that makes sense. And then what do we need to do for the third one? The limit as X approaches negative one, we just showed that's negative four, for H of X is equal to H of negative one, and didn't we just show a second ago that that's all equal to negative four? Okay, that is your full credit for part A. Let me zoom out here so you can read all this. H of X is continuous at X equals negative one because H of negative one is defined. The limits from the left and the limits from the right match. The limit as X approaches negative one for the graph of H is equal to H of negative one. Okay, does anybody have any questions on part A? Ask if you have them. Okay, back to the problem. We are going to go into part B. All right, so now we are trying to order all of this stuff that's talking about H double prime. We're trying to order it. So if I'm gonna order it, I should just find it first. So let's find H double prime. 
So a second ago, we said H prime of X is equal to, what did that give us? H prime was equal to uh, 2X plus three and G prime of X. So H double prime, that's what I care about. H double prime is equal to, what do we get? The bottom is G double prime. And then the top would just be what? Two. Plug in negative two. All right, so now that would be for X is less than negative one. This one's for X is between or equal to negative one to 11. All right, now we have our derivative, our second derivative. We now need to find three things negative two, two, and 10. So now you gotta look at which piece of this piecewise do I plug into? All right, so I'm looking for H double prime of negative two. All right, to locate that, which part of the piecewise am I plugging into, the top one or the bottom one? Top. Top one, nothing to even plug into. That answer is two. The next thing I wanna find is H, double prime of two. All right, H double prime of two is gonna be the same thing as G double prime. G double prime of two. Well, I don't know what that is, so we better go find out. How do we find G double prime of two? G equals integral F. G prime equals F. G double prime equals F prime. Translation, G double prime of two is equal to F prime of two, which is equal to, I don't know, let's look. So talk to me about this graph. Here's F of X. I wanna know F prime of two. Are we able to know the exact value of F prime of two? No, but what do I know about it? It's a negative slope. That's what I would say. I say, I know it's a negative. So let's just stop with that and see, hopefully this will be enough for us to figure this out. Okay, the last thing I need to figure out is H double prime of 10. So if we're gonna do H double prime of 10, sounds like the same story, H double prime of 10, we already showed a second ago, it's gonna be G double prime of two, or in this case, G double prime of 10, which is really F prime of 10, which is really, now to the graph we go, what's up at 10? F prime of 10 is what? Zero. Because that's a turning point, right? Are we good at that being the horizontal tangent? Bingo. Now I have all of the information that I need to answer this question. I now know that H double prime of two is two. H double prime of 10 is zero. And I don't know what this is, but I know it's negative. And now I have the information to list it. So you would have just shown this kind of work here. And then what's my answer? So the smallest one is H double prime of two. So H double prime of two is less than H double prime of 10 is less than H double prime of two. And we've got an answer. Does anybody have any questions on A or on B? So as you're seeing, I think that's super doable. It's gonna challenge you a little bit more to think maybe, but if you're understanding these ideas now, you're gonna to start to see down the stretch, cool, this makes sense. I just have to apply it in different ways. Not that big of a deal. Does anybody have any questions on A or B? Okay, we're heading to part C. All right, part C, 
is new information, kind of, sort of. We're going to do part C together. All right, for C, I had mentioned this rule earlier in the year and said, yeah, we'll come back to it. And today's the day we come back to it. So we've got a limit question. All right, how do we normally tackle a limit question? What's the plan? We plug in the... Um... Sure. All right, you guys plug in six for me real quick. See what you get. I'm going to do the same thing. Plug in six and see what you get. The limit as X approaches six, that would be equal to G of six zero for zero. All right, so what do we know about G of six? Let me back flash back here for you. G of six. How do we find G? G of six. All right, so G of six is two to six. Two to six. Are we good? That'd be a negative three. The G of six part. So if that's negative three, and then this piece right here is plus three, are we good with that answer being? Zero over zero. All right, let me turn this off and recap. There is a limit thing called it's pronounced lopi tall, I believe. Anyways, here's the rule. If you plug in your limit and you get zero over zero, it's got to be zero over zero. Or, now I'm extending the rule here, infinity over infinity. Uh, for our purposes, I think it's always zero over zero for Calc AB. I don't know that I've ever seen anything involving the infinity limits with this. Quite likely it's zero over zero. So for the purpose of this problem, if you plug in your limit and you get zero over zero, this rule says, take the derivative of the top and bottom and try plugging in again. So let me show you a real easy example of this problem before we do the hard one. Yep, I got you, Bennett. I'll turn it off and we're done. All right, so let's say that we have um, something real easy. We know how to do this. Let's say the limit as x approaches. Let's say we've got x squared minus 4 over x minus 2 and it's the limit as x approaches 2. You guys know how to do this, right? Factor cancel, plug it in, no big deal. But now, now when we first start the year off, you don't, you don't even know what a derivative is, so I can't teach you L'Hopital's rule. But an, another way of doing this problem is, what happens if I plug in 2? You go to that being 0 over 0, right? So if you get 0 over 0, this rule works out to where take the derivative of the top and bottom, Take the derivative of the top and bottom and plug in again. Answer is four. It's the same exact answer you would get if you factored this and did what we did at the beginning of the year. Factor, cancel, plug in. You're going to get four either way. Now, does it matter which way you solve this problem? No. However, for hard, crazy looking things, you need this. So like the problem we're about to do. You need this. We can't factor it. It's not x squared minus 4. But the rule says when you plug in, put it this way, if you see a limit question on your free response, here's what they're talking about. Because it's a free response question, they're not telling you. They're not going to give you something that says factor cancel. That's too easy. If you see a limit question in your free response, it's like 99.9% .9 certainty. This is what we're talking about. So to handle this problem, you're going to take the derivative of the top and bottom and plug the thing back in. So now I will pause for about three or four minutes. It's 4.03, we will talk around 4.07, 4.08. Try to apply L'Hopital's rule to this and see what you get. So take the derivative of the top and bottom and try it again. Ready, go.
All right, so if we try to take the derivative of this, after you showed that it was zero over zero, if we take the derivative of this, we should get, you wanna write the phrase by by L'Hopital's rule, and then we're gonna show derivative of the top and bottom, but you wanna write this down, and then it's gonna be, what's my derivative? G prime of X plus, how do we take the derivative of that? E to the stuff stuff prime. So three E to the 12 minus two X times, what's stuff prime? The 12's gone, negative two, divided by 2x, okay? All right, next, we plug in six and see what we get. So this is g prime of six plus, what do we get here? If you put a six in up there, remember that makes it zero, right? So e to the zero, e to the zero is one, three times one times negative two is a negative six over, 12. Okay, last thing we need to do now is find g prime of six, going back to the beginning there, g prime of six, g is equal to integral f. So g prime is what? g prime would just be f. So if we say g prime's f, f of six is zero. So this is now zero plus a negative, it's negative six over 12. The answer to this question is negative one half. So not hard, you're just learning on the fly. Oh, I see a limit question in my free response. Pretty good chance I should plug in, got it. It gave me zero over zero. There's this rule, derive top and bottom, plug in your thing and you've got an answer. Any questions on C? All right, take a look at D. For question C on the free response, before L'Hopital, you do the rule, you'd have to write it out and show that it's zero by zero. Yes, so you are gonna start by showing that right there, and you came up with zero over zero. And then after you show that, you head right down to here and say, by L'Hopital's rule, and then you go from there. Okay. All right, we're heading to part D. We got an integral, some sort of integral. All right, do we have any ideas on this one, what we could do? Think about when we did area bounded. Remember how we smushed stuff together? Just like you can smush stuff together, you can also uh, rip it apart. So would it make sense to say that that is the same thing as one to seven? Now, remember what we do with constants. You can take a constant out front. Three, h prime of two x minus four, I'm gonna rip this apart, plus the integral from one to seven of five. So just like I could smoosh this together, I can also rip it apart so I have something to work with. All right, All right. questions now. How do we integrate this? That's easy. Do we know the integral of this off the top of our head? Should be saying no. So what do we do if it's not something easy? We gotta do what? U okay. substitution. U substitution. So I'm out of hints. That should be enough to get you going. You wanna do a U substitution on the left. See what you come up with. I'll give you five minutes and we will talk. Ready, go.
Okay, so we should have 2x minus 4. So that makes du 2dx, which makes dx du divided by 2. So if we plug this in up there, that's going to be, let me turn the screen off for a second so we can see better. All right, so does anybody have any questions at that point? Plugging that in plus takes us over to there. All right, so we go to this two coming out front, makes it a uh, three over two out front. So this is three over two integral one to seven h prime of u du plus one to seven five dx. Okay, we're ready to integrate. What do we get if we integrate h prime of u? H itself, like h. H, h of u, right? So if we integrate this, this is going to be three halves h of u from one to seven plus one, to, oh, we don't have one to seven, how about five X from one to seven. Now I need to plug in my U. So this is three halves H of two X minus four from one to seven plus, let's just do this real quick. You guys good with this being 30? Plug in the top minus plug in the bottom for that other one. That's just 35 minus five. All right, now when we get over to here, this is, let's separate this like this. We'll play with the three halves later. So it's three halves times. All right, what do we get? This is H of, if I put in that top, what is that, H of 10? Yes. Minus H of, Negative two. Negative two plus 30. All right, so we got to go locate h of 10 and h of negative two. So back we go. All right, we're at h. h of 10. h of 10 is the same thing as g of 10. And g of 10 is the same thing as the integral from 2 to 10 of f. 2 to 10 of f. That result is what? Negative 1. So that's negative 1. All right. How about negative 2? If we plug in negative 2, which part of the piecewise is that going to, top or bottom? Top. So that's going to be what for an answer? 4 minus 12 is negative 8 minus 2 more. Are we get negative 10? Let me try that again. We're putting in negative 2. So that's 4. Negative 12. 4. Oh, we're putting in 2, huh? Sorry, four, negative six is negative two. I'm getting negative four. Does that make sense? Do that one more time. We're putting in negative two. So that's four minus six is negative two and negative two minus two, yeah, negative four. All right, plus that, don't forget the three halves. Uh, you can stop right there, guys. You've got everything plugged in. We don't need to do anything else. They give you full credit for that, right? There, as soon as you have figured out anything that is a plug-in, you can stop right there. Now we could go through and do this math, of course. Negative one minus minus, that makes out a plus. That's gonna be three. That's gonna be nine halves. You can add your 30 to your nine halves. Uh, it ends up giving you 69 over two. But you can just stop right there and you're good. The second you get everything plugged in and figured out, you're in good shape. Okay. 
Any questions on part D? Wait, why didn't you plug in uh, the 10 in the first? Um, the I did, I did, I did. So the first one gets plugged in down here because 10 fits this interval down here. Oh, yeah, yeah, the range. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so G of 10 now becomes the integral of F from 2 to 10, and that gave us a result of negative 1. Yeah, the reason that you didn't like plug it in, in first. Um... Yeah, so if you have a piecewise, you plug it into whichever boundary it fits in. Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right, last part for the day. We're doing a differential equation to wrap things up. So we know that dy dx is equal to that mess. And we want to find a particular solution for that point negative two, two. So first things first, you should split your variables. And that would give you one over y minus one dy is equal to h prime of x dx. Integral, integral, off you go. See what you get. Okay, so left side should have been U substituted. And when you did that, it should have been one over U. You should be super familiar with this at this point. So it's one over U DU is equal to H prime of X DX. We hit integrate and that's gonna be natural log of U, which was Y minus one is equal to, what do we get if we integrate H prime? We get H is equal to h of x plus c. Okay, now we have a point to plug in, negative two, two. If I plug in two for y, natural log of one is zero. I need to find h of negative two plus c. All right, now, where do we find h of negative two at? We go back to the problem, h of negative two. Didn't we just find that last problem? Yeah, negative four. Yeah, we just did that last problem, right? So you don't even do that math. We already know it. It's going to be negative four plus C. So C 
is equal to four. Now we're going to go up now and toss that in. So now I have natural log of y minus one is equal to h of x plus four. It should all be starting to sound familiar to you. How do we unlock this version of y? We change it to natural, or we change the natural log to a logarithm in base e. Okay, log, base, answer, exponent. It's equal to y minus one. Hopefully you're all good with me just adding that one over and you've got an answer. Is there anything else they want us to do here? Let this be a particular solution for, for y. That's it guys, you're done, you got an answer. Does anybody have any questions on that? Okay, if that's all making sense, I will reiterate, I think you're doing really good. So that's a 2020 free response from College Board. Um, that's what I'm gonna be working with you guys on, on Wednesday and Thursday is more of these 2020 free responses. Um, over the weekend, we're gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna give you a lesson to learn on your own. Um, it's, uh, there's a video I'm gonna give you. There's a college lecture. I think this guy does a pretty reasonable job of teaching it. He's a younger guy. Um, it's like a two hour long video though. And I am going to, instead of having you guys work on an assignment over the weekend, I'm gonna ask you to watch this guy's lecture. It's like his classes for the week on this lesson. It's like three 45 minute classes and it's just all compiled into like a two minute, two hour video. So for your weekend assignment, it's gonna to be to watch this guy's lesson and practice what he has so that when you come in next Monday, you should have a pretty good idea of what we're talking about for that topic, okay? But then for the rest of the week here, Wednesday, Thursday, it'll be stuff like this, these 2020 free responses with some twists and turns on them that we'll work on, okay? Any questions, guys? All right, uh, give me one second. Let me scribble some names down here for attendance and we will be out of here. All right, I got him. All right, guys, have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Thank you, You're Mr. Baker. welcome. You're welcome. See you, guys.